And they are very successful in this stadium, and they are expecting another full house. Minnesota won the coin toss, and the Gophers will receive the kick from Brown. May and Myrick. And Myrick lets it bounce for a touchback, which is where the Gophers will start things off at the 25. I'm Eamon McEnany, happy to be joined by the former Notre Dame linebacker, Rocky Boyman. And the Gophers have a veteran running the offense. Yeah, they do. Mitch Leidner. Now, he was really helped last week because Minnesota got back to their identity of being a running team. But I think this fan base here in Minnesota would like to see their quarterback give them a little bit more. And Nebraska defensively very good at stopping the run. He's going to have to be key today. They cannot just rely solely on the run game. Jerry Kill telling us yesterday the play action play will be key as he knows Nebraska is going to load up to stop the run. It starts with Rodney Smith in the backfield. The redshirt freshman bounces to the outside and then pushed back by Josh Kalu. A gain of two for the redshirt freshman out of Jonesboro, Georgia, who was a bit under the weather and took a back seat to Shannon Brooks, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. But again, Jerry Kill telling us yesterday third down will be key, so they want to make it third and manageable here on second and eight. Two backs now. High snap. Leitner keeps it. Gets to the 30. Welcome to TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Minnesota with a 4-2 and two record, hosting 2-4 and four Nebraska. I'm Eamon McEnany along with Rocky Boyman. The Gophers on the opening possession. Now with a third and five. They stick with Smith in the pistol. Trips to the left. Leidner rolls that way. Here comes pressure. Dumps it off. Low and complete. K.J. May goes down to make the catch. That was a good job by Leidner rolling out to his left, which is always a tougher thing for a right-handed quarterback, but he gets a better view of the field. Doesn't quite set his feet up, but he finds the wide receiver, his best target, K.J. May. These wide receivers, I think, really got to get going here today. K.J. May, also like the tight end, Brandon Lingen. Can't be all just running. It's going to be the play-action pass going to be key today. Now the fly sweep to May. Short gain. Rocky, who are your impact players when the Gophers have the ball? Over well, Nebraska, they got two big bodies on their defensive line. Vincent Valentine, he made a, reappear a reappearance last week, had a big game. And Tyler Moore of the center, a true freshman, removed his red shirt last week. He did a good job versus Purdue, Eamon, but this is a much bigger task here with this Nebraska defensive line. Nebraska, the eighth best run defense in the country. There's a look at the freshman from Texas. Now Miles Thomas in at fullback. This is Smith. He runs in to Nate Gary and goes down. And Rocky. Minnesota wants to run. Nebraska's good at stopping the run. Yeah, it's really a, a battle of both teams' strengths here. Who, we're going to see who wins here. And Nebraska also, they played this quarters defense, really stacked the box, nine guys in that box for most of the time here. But the offensive line for Minnesota, it's kind of a ragtag group. They've been battled, had a lot of injuries. They need to get together here today. Trips to the right. They stay with Smith in the backfield. Nebraska bringing pressure up the middle. They get through to Leitner, and they, but he gets it off for completion. Into Nebraska territory, Drew Wolotarski beat Jonathan Rose. We see Nebraska brings the pressure, but a nice job by Leitner staying strong in the pocket, takes a shot to the chops, but still delivers an excellent seven route to the outside. There's Malik Collins getting in the face of Leitner. But the redshirt junior did a nice job delivering that football. Pickup of 24. Down to the Nebraska 33. Here, play fake. Complete to May. And then he's brought down at the 30 by Jonathan Rose. 
Make that to 26, excuse me. Now we talked about Nebraska's defensive front being the eighth best in the nation stopping the run. Their pass defense, Eamon, dead last in the country. So I think Minnesota coming in this game, yes, they want their identity of running the football, but I, they think they can get something going in the passing game. Most teams that have faced Nebraska this year have. High formation, Thomas and Smith. Eric Carter, the wide out to the right. Here's Smith, met behind the line of scrimmage, but still on his feet. Able to spin forward for a positive gain. And one time, one thing we talked about was the protection by Tyler Moore, the true freshman. And here early in the game wasn't great. Remember, this defensive front, these two big tackles, Malik Collins and Vincent Valentine, are going to be giving him heck all day. He's got to be a little bit more solid as this game goes on. So now third and one from the 24, I formation. Play fake. Looking for six. Touchdown Gophers, Eric Carter. I just talked about the secondary for Nebraska has been a liability this entire season. And this time Josh Kalu just loses track of the wide receiver. When that ball's in the air, he's got to have better presence and know where that wide receiver is. He lets him go, and it's a touchdown. The extra point from Santoso is good. And it wasn't all smash mouth running the football. Carter with his first touchdown catch of the year. They load up the box on third and short. The Gophers go deep. And the Gopher fans and the quarterback, Mitch Leitner, love the result. Got to get used to it. He said he really saw him bounce back in that Purdue that game. And, you know, there has been some talk about playing the freshman, Dimry Craw. But he says, put simply, Mitch is the better quarterback right now. He knows the offense, and he's a great leader. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Jane. And a huge hit delivered on the kickoff return. Like... Duke McGee. Yeah, name is just a good, solid, good football hit coming right into your living room right there. May got a little bit of contact in the head, but uh, flag doesn't come out. Minnesota wants to set the tone today. Nebraska led by Tommy, Tommy Armstrong Jr. And Rocky, he got off to a great start. Has struggled since. He really has. It's been, you know, he's trying to fit into this Mike Riley passing system. He's more of a get outside the pocket, dual threat running quarterback, fitting into this again, this Mike Riley system of a sit back in the pocket and go through the progressions. He needs to get better here as this season goes on. Here's Terrell Newby. Two yard pickup. Talking to Coach Riley this week about the passing game, it's like it's disappeared. 21 of 59 in the two Big Ten games. What is, and one thing we constantly heard all week, Eamon, was two things. Need a limited menu, basically simplify things for Tommy Armstrong in this offense, and also give him less options in plays. In this system, there's a first route, a second route, a third option, a fourth. Maybe cut down those down a little bit, make it easier for Armstrong. Second and eight. Play fake over the middle, complete for a first down. Jordan Westerkamp. And for Nebraska, DeMornay Pearson now, he had a broken foot early in the in the offseason here, finally now getting back to full speed. He has a unique skill set they got to take advantage of. And then for Minnesota up front, they have a big guy themselves, Steven Richardson, just gives teams absolute fits at that defensive tackle position. Offense coordinator Danny Langsdorf telling us 96 is a concern, to say the least. So that first and 10 from the Nebraska 31. Newby on the draw. He could go. The 50, the 40, the 30, the 20. Touchdown, Nebraska. 69 yards. That's why they call it execution. 
And even there's clearly a breakdown in Minnesota's defense. There's absolutely nobody in that gap to that side. No safety at the second level either. And Newby just takes the ball, uses his speed, gets to the end zone. So now Drew Brown on for the extra point to tie this thing up at seven. And just like that, the Cornhuskers and Terrell Newby with the explosive play, they answer. His fourth touchdown of the season on the ground. Nothing but green turf in front of number 34 and white. Terrell Newby with a career long run, 69 yards to tie this ball game up at seven. 8.52 left to go in the first quarter. Trying to figure it out on the Gopher sidelines. Devondre Campbell leading the conversation. But now the Gophers offense will get the ball back. May and Myrick back to receive. This could be returnable. And then it has some length to it, but May brings it out. Myrick brings it out anyway. Spins, still on his feet. Gets out to the 23. Rocky, where was the breakdown on the go for defense on that long run? Well, this Nebraska offense has a lot of moving parts, and what you're going to see is they'll bring the, the wide receiver at the bottom of your screen, Brandon Riley, across the formation. When he does, you'll see the, the safety, number 11, Antonio Johnson, goes with that fake, and he vacates that entire side of the field. Eye discipline is very important for a safety. His eyes were on Brandon Riley, and Newby is going right up the sideline. It was a penalty on the return, blocking the back, so that'll back up the Gophers. All the way back to the Minnesota Five. Here's a look at Jerry Kill, the Big Ten Coach of the Year a year ago. Now he sends out his freshman, Shannon Brooks. A huge game a week ago against Purdue, but they swing it out to May. Gets by the first tackler, stiff arm for another couple of yards. Byerson Cockrell shoves him out of bounds, but a good gain on first down for the Gophers. And I think what you're seeing is Minnesota is attacking the perimeters of the field. They want to loosen up that Nebraska front a little bit. As I said, they've stacked those nine guys in the box and think if they can get some perimeter passes, loosen those guys up a little bit, then maybe start pounding them up the middle with a run. Pick up a nine, moves it out to the 14. Stack the receivers, now motion. With Brooks. Looks like he's going to be short, so it'll be third and short. Brooks completely changed that game a week ago around in the third quarter when he went 71 yards for a touchdown. That certainly energized this Minnesota team. It did. He was a little banged up in practice this week, but uh, Coach Kill told us yesterday he will go, and boy, how electrifying was he last week. Minnesota was 3 of 3 on third downs on that opening drive that resulted in the touchdown. Now Brooks, they fake the fly sweep. Leidner's going to keep it, and he's going to get nowhere near it. Nebraska ready for that play. And they forced a three and out. Nate Gary coming from the safety position along with Greg McMullen. It's going to be tough sledding if they're going to feel like they're going to chip away at that front there in between those A-gaps. It looked like on the jet sweep they had Shannon Brooks had they handed the ball off to him. But there was nothing going for Leidner up the middle on that play. So after getting nine on first down, Minnesota's going to have to punt. Mornay Pearsonell back to receive. Good punt by the reigning Big Ten first team punter of the year. Does he outkick his coverage though? Into Minnesota territory. He's got to get by the punter. And Mortel saves a touchdown. But that is why they are fired up to have number 15 back and healthy and ready to go. And we talk about Pearsonell being a dynamic playmaker. And this is what he's done last year so well was big time plays in the kick game. Now I think for Nebraska, if they can get this kind of production in the, in the offensive game, they'll be doing well. 
41 yard return sets up Nebraska in business. I'm Eamon McEnany along with Rocky Boyman and Rocky take a look at that big run by Nebraska certainly what they needed after all the heartbreaking losses. Yeah it really was they, you know they came in here they get a punch in the mouth real quick by Minnesota they needed to answer here in this hostile environment and they certainly did get newbie with the touchdown. Hostile environment there's thousands and thousands <laughs> of fans wearing red another full house here at TCF Bank Stadium but now Armstrong Jr. and the Gophers in the red zone. with a short gain. So now second and five. Off the play fake. Back to Newby on the screen. Good job by Johnson to come up on that one. So now it'll be third and three. Rocky, what are you looking for here from the Cornhuskers? Well, again, for Nebraska, Tommy Armstrong Jr.'s number one go to guy has been Jordan Westerkamp, but defense's last couple weeks have taken Westerkamp out of the game. I'd sure like to see them get the ball to Pearsonell here down here in this area of the field. Western camp in the slot to the left. Just three catches in the last two games. Already has one here this afternoon. They go to Stanley Morgan, the freshman, actually looking for newbie, and it's incomplete. Johnson with the coverage. So Mike Riles going to send out Drew Brown and the kicking team to try to take the lead. game already this year against Southern Miss the sophomore out of Texas kicked five field goals it will be a 31 yarder no good so after the great return put him in the red zone they come away with donuts Drew Brown's been solid this year, but he misses to the right there, and the Gophers dodge one. Minnesota starting to play for something in this rivalry that dates back to 1900. They swing it out to Wolotarski. Gets across the 25, and then a trio of Cornhuskers bring them down. This is what they play for here. Started this one. Bo Pellini and Goldie the Gopher with a Twitter battle. Goldie started off with a tweet about the game that Bo Pellini responded with a proposition to get $5 as Nebraska won. They played for the broken chair, offering to turn the broken chair into a rivalry trophy for this series. And Rocky, I know that would get you fired up to run through that tunnel and play a game for a broken chair as the freshman Brooks gets turned back. Uh, only on social media would a and they turn it over did not see that ball come loose I saw the gopher bench excuse me the Cornhusker bench react I thought it was a little excited for a stop on second and four but the freshman coughs it up it looked like you know he's a guy that loves contact but sometimes when you're coming into a defender who's going to hit you've got to get two arms on that ball but the freshman running back does not it was Nate Gary with the hit and then Jack Gangwish, the captain, is playing with a hurt elbow. Returned last week, fell on it. So again, another opportunity for Armstrong and the Cornhuskers. At the 29. The fullback, Janovich, in there, but they go to Newby. Johnson. Jonathan Celestine, the linebacker, comes up to, to the tackle for a loss. And a linebacker's job is to scrape across on this zone play, and Celestine does a fantastic job defeating the block and still keeping his outside arm free. That's the key. The left arm is still there to make the tackle. The right one's still coming off the block. Brings the running back to turf. Minnesota not at full strength at the linebacker position. The leading tackler, Cody Pope, out for today's ball game. Now Armstrong with time. Deep. Incomplete. Great coverage by Myrick on Pearsonell. You talk about Jalen Myrick. He had a fantastic game last week. 
two interceptions. I thought he made a bunch of nice plays, but here he is just in perfect coverage. Has the left arm out there until the ball is delivered. And then we talk about the pocket for Armstrong. Pretty good job by this offensive line. I know Armstrong gets a lot of flack for how he's not doing a good job in the system, but it's been a variety of things, Eamon. Sometimes the offensive line hasn't protected well enough for him. Sometimes the receivers have dropped footballs they shouldn't. It's not all on Tommy Armstrong. Third and 13, looking to cash in off the fumble recovery. All day. Now he's going to improvise. Looking for six. Touchdown, Nebraska. Alonzo Moore with the sliding grab. 32 yards, and that's what Armstrong does when he gets out of the pocket. And, and it's so devastating for defenses, Eamon. They don't get a lot of pressure on him, but the secondary is doing a good job of covering. But when you give this kind of time to an extending dual threat quarterback like Armstrong, at some point he's going to beat you, going to his right, throwing off the run, and just throws a dart to the wide receiver. The route comes from all the way from across the other side of the field. But only when you have that amount of time can a receiver that starts on the left side get all the way to the corner on the right to get the touchdown. The extra point from Brown is good. So Alonzo Moore with his fifth touchdown reception of the season. And you know, Rocky, I think that play sort of symbolizes what Nebraska and Coach Riley are dealing with here in this passing game. You know, they probably held their breath when he gets out of the pocket because he's going to try to force it. But every once in a while, forcing it's a great play. And that's, we've talked to Mike Riley about that. Look, his system is a guy. He wants that quarterback to sit in the pocket and go through one, two, three, four, five options and deliver the football. But that's not Tommy Armstrong. That's not exactly who he is. He's a dual threat guy. That's not what he's been in the past. And when he can extend plays like that, even Mike Riley said, look, it's not perfect, maybe not exactly how I want it, but it's effective. You can saw it was right on that play. Mike Riley telling reporters after last week's loss to Wisconsin, he's, this is becoming a broken record. They really need something to feel good about here on the road against Minnesota. May and Myrick back to receive again. Brown, ready to kick. This time Myra takes a knee for a touchback. So Nebraska takes the lead. Let's go to the studio and check in with Chris Cotter. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Certainly a score that's uh, opening some eyes all across college football earlier today. Memphis knocking off Ole Miss. Big win for the Tigers in the American Athletic Conference. Now Rodney Smith back in the backfield after the freshman fumbled. Wide open is Brandon Lingen who makes the grab. That'll be a first down. And a reminder that tonight, Rocky, it's a huge SEC showdown between undefeated top 10 teams on college football presented by Hill. Dual threat quarterback Treon Harris takes over the, for the suspended Will Greer, and he leads the eighth ranked Gators against the Heisman front runner Leonard Fournette and the sixth ranked Tigers. Florida LSU tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Now they go to the other side. Will Tarski gets across the 40, and he. Nope, thought he put it on the rug as one of the gophers tried to pick it up. A six-yard gain for Drew Olatarski. And again, high percentage, just three-step, one-step kind of passes here for Matt Leidner. Get him comfortable. And then at some point, Eamon, I, I really believe if they keep having success attacking the perimeter of the field, they're going to start going downhill with the run game. We saw the tight end, Brandon Lingen, being looked at on the sidelines by the trainers after the first down grab. Now Smith up the middle. Can't push the pile. Stopped at the 44. Let's take a look at Lingen. To the first down completion a couple plays ago. Of course, Lingen with his first two career touchdown catches last week. Try to get a look at exactly what happened. I don't know if the defender Kalou got him on the ankle there. Or maybe it looks like a shoulder maybe when he landed. If it's that elbow or shoulder on the landing, he's up. 
Hopefully we'll see him back on the field. Now third and two for Leidner. Smith in the backfield. Another rollout. Forced to throw early right at the sticks. This looks like he's going to be short. May makes the grab, but Josh Kalou comes up with the tackle. So now Jerry Kill with the decision to make it is 45. Leidner out there for now. It was a good job by Kalou breaking and tackling the receiver before he could get some yards after the catch. Kalou, remember, was beat for the touchdown earlier. Did a nice job on that play. Jerry Kill's going to play it safe. He sends out Peter Mortel. Play the field position game down by seven. Pearsonell back to receive. Good kick. Pearsonell lets it go and it takes a Minnesota bounce back and they will down it at the eight. Antonio Johnson downs it. So Nebraska with a seven point lead gets the ball back inside their own 10 when we return. Nebraska with the ball back. First and 10. Newby on the draw. Spins out of a tackle. Gets across the 10. Almost up to the 15. Murray and Kunle Day with the tackle. Six yard gain for Newby. And usually people talk about oh we got to get the run game going to help out the pass game. I think it's the exact opposite for Nebraska. They need to get the pass game a little bit more efficient. I think that's going to open up some more holes for the run game. And this Minnesota defense banged up as well. Going without Cody Polk. The linebacker who leads Minnesota in tackles. You'll see a lot more nickel this afternoon. Now off the play fake. Over the middle, high throw for Pearsonell. Incomplete. Murray with the coverage. We talk, I, I think this will be the, the heaviest workload that Pearsonell has gotten supposedly. Again, last week just re reintroduced him to the lineup. I think today, as long as he's feeling healthy, they're going to try to get him the ball more. How do you try to get it to him on third and four? Fly sweep or a pass? That they talked about the fly sweep. They also talked about the screen game Mike Riley did here. This might be a screen opportunity for Nebraska. Janovich, the fullback, has become more of a threat lately. And he has it here. And he loses the football, but gets it back right at the marker. Andy Janovich cleans up his own mess and keeps the drive alive. For a Nebraska team where things have been going wrong most of the year, they finally get a break here. They hand the ball off to the fullback. Janovich puts it on the ground, bounces right back up to him. And even a couple weeks ago, we saw the emergence of Andy Janovich versus Southern Miss. Hadn't had a carry before that game, and since then, he's been a big-time factor in the run game. We won in Lincoln and Omaha and across the state. Thought he sealed the victory last week with a huge run. Now up the middle. It goes Newby. That does it for a first quarter. So Minnesota struck first through the air. But then Newby went 69 yards. And then Armstrong found more. So Mike Riley's club on the road. Looking to avoid a three-game losing streak to Minnesota. Has the lead and the ball. Second quarter when we return to Minneapolis. Welcome back to TCF Bank Stadium. A great crowd on hand for Minnesota and Nebraska. The visitors from Lincoln lead 14-7 and Rocky several big explosive plays already. Yeah, and one, Minnesota did one thing they've not done all year, which is get a touchdown in the first quarter. The first one there goes to Eric Carr, and then Nebraska get, gets back on the board with a running game, Terrell Newby, and then it's just Armstrong creating, extending that play and finding the wide receiver in the back corner of the end zone. A little bit of back and forth here in Minnesota. Newby already with 85 yards on six carries. Of course, it helps to have that 69-yard touchdown run. Now Armstrong in Nebraska ready for second and four. From their own 26. Setting up the wide receiver screen. Pearson L makes the first man miss and gets the first down. Pick up a four. And Rocky, talk about what a big loss that was in training camp when you combine his talents with Mike Riley's offense. It really was. 
Pearson now was supposed to be the Brandon Cooks of this offense, the dynamic, explosive playmaker that could just take a top off of a defense. But you can also see he's so good. Look, just get him the ball in space and allow him to create after that. They mark it at the 30. They go back to the I formation with Janovich and Newby. Swing it out to Moore. Still on his feet at the 35. Gets across the 40, thrown out of bounds. Another Nebraska first down. Let's check in with Chris Cotter back in the studio. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Certainly that was one of the big questions about that ball game, Texas A&M's ability on defense to stop the Alabama ground game. Uh, Newby gets across the 45 for a short game. Brought down by Jack Lynn. Pick up of two. It's been all Newby so far pretty much in the running game. They had opened it up to running back by committee last couple of games, but now the junior out of Los Angeles has been carrying the load. I think he's their most versatile running back. He's good, at, obviously, in the run game. Can also catch some passes out of the backfield for him. Eighth play of the drive. Now they get it to Newby on the screen, and this is well set up. Johnson does a good job to avoid the block and bring him down, because that looked like he was going to go the distance. It's a nice job of mis misdirection on that play. And it's just simple things. That's what Nebraska needs to get back to. Let's not make things too complicated out there. They bring the wide receiver across, and then just leak Newby out of the backfield. Got a couple of linemen leading the way downfield. That's what, again, what these coaches talked about all week. Let's not get too complicated out there. Let's not add plays. That's not the answer. Let's take plays away, get a little bit more simple. They also say, let's remember, we've been doing some good things out there. It hasn't been all bad. We have been moving the ball. Now Janovich has been one of those positive factors, rumbling his way for a first down. <laughs> Pretty amazing the way the seniors emerged. And these fullback runs for Nebraska, they hit so quick. Because look at the depth of Janovich. He's like literally two yards behind the center. And that ball is on a defense right now. When you got a guy that can lower his shoulders like Janovich, you got something going. For the Southern Miss game, six yards career rushing. Coming in, he had 174 in the last three games. Now, Divine Zigbo in the backfield. He has it here. Runs right in to Richardson. You know, we just saw that graphic about balance. When you take a look at Mike Riley over the years, what's his definition of good balance? Well, it's a little bit more favored to the pass. This is a passing kind of offense. That's where they get the yards. But as I said earlier, I think the passing, if they can pass the ball well, it's going to open things up for the run game, which is more what Nebraska is known for. 11th play of the drive. Newby back in there, second and six. Armstrong with time. Pumps, high throw. Looking for Alonzo Moore at 6-2. Good coverage from Jalen Myrick at 5-10. And this is one Armstrong I think wishes he had back. He had plenty of time in that pocket, could have hit Armstrong. That's been the key for Armstrong, especially the last couple weeks. His accuracy has not been good. You can see he has plenty of time, plenty of field view, and that ball just sails on him. And in the last two weeks, his completion percentage has been 35%. That will not work in this Mike Riley system. Third and six. Janovich in the backfield, twins to the left. Armstrong's going to keep it himself on the quarterback draw, and he gets the first down. So the design quarterback run, Jack Lynn brings him down, but he picks up seven. And that's the thing with a guy like Armstrong with his offense. It's kind of complex, and there's so many things you got to account for. But the last thing you think about sometimes is the running ability of Armstrong. That time gets a great block by the fullback, Andy Janovich. There's so many things to think about when you have a dual threat quarterback, and Armstrong can sure pick up some yards with his legs. First and 10 from the 15. The Gophers take a timeout, looking to regroup on the defensive side of the ball. 
So Nebraska with the lead and knocking on the door back to Minneapolis after this. Great day in Minneapolis for Big Ten football and a reminder don't miss any college football action while you're on the go to stream every game live on your computer tablet or smartphone download the watch ESPN app or go to watch ESPN.com Rocky had his tablet out watching Memphis <laughs> right. and Ole Miss you even snuck in South Florida and Yukon you were all over the place all over the place today. on the phone on the tablet you got it now first and 10 from the Minnesota 15. They give it to Moore on the fly sweep, and Myrick's ready for it. Looked like a uh, tough exchange. And he loses a yard. Remember one thing Tracy Clay, the defensive coordinator for Minnesota, talked about yesterday was being better on third down. Well, how do you be better on third down? Make it a third and long. It's going to be critical for them to keep him back here on second down. Last third and long. Armstrong picked it up on the quarterback draw and now trips to the left. Which is where Armstrong starts looking. Into the end zone for Carter. He can't bring it in. Kunle Allende was able to get back and make a play, but it was in the hands of Carter. And I mean, this ball just got a little too much air underneath it. Armstrong lofted it way too much. If he just puts it on a little bit more of a line, the receiver's going to be able to catch it. As you can see, it's coming just a little bit too much loft, and it allows the defensive back, Ayunde, to get back into position and knock the ball away. Ayunde, the walk-on, thrown into the fire this year with the injuries in the secondary, and now the Gophers trying to force a field goal. Third and 11. Newby in the backfield, trips to the right. Here comes pressure. Armstrong will not get away. The Aaron Cochran. With the sack, a loss of 12. And you know that has to fire up the defensive coordinator, Tracy Clays. Absolutely. Third down, what's the be best way to shut it down? Get your big-time defensive end screaming off the edge. He beats the right tackle on the, on the play, dips the right shoulder, and is able to get to Armstrong, and now forcing a long field goal. Forces a 46-yard kick. Brown coming in, four of eight from 40 or more. is long enough and it's good he has hit from 49 and 50 already this year and now he makes it a 17 7 ball game with that 46 yarder so it was a long drive for the Cornhuskers and they get points Nebraska on the road up by 10. Brown right off the field goal with another touchback as May makes the grab. So now Mitch Leidner. The good news is he's 10 for 10. The bad news is now maybe for Minnesota he's going to have to throw more because well, you're down 10. That's the thing. Minnesota wants to keep the game close because then they can really lean on that run game. They do not want to put this game into the hands of Mitch Leidner, make him win it himself. But look, Leiter has been pretty good, especially in the pass game. I think it's really loosened some things up for the run game. There you see early on he finds Wolitarski, then throwing on the run from the early touchdown to Carter. He's done some good things. He's a guy that's taken a lot of flack. Look, he's a hometown kid here in Minnesota, and a lot of people are not a, really a fan of his play. But look, the guy's won a lot of games around here. Off the play fake, looking deep, and he overthrows. Rashad Still, the freshman out of Texas. It's hard to overthrow Rashad Still. He's six foot five, but Leiter just put a little bit too much air underneath the ball. Looked like he had enough time. As you see in the drop back here, nice play action pass. We talked about that's going to be key, but just a little bit too far for Still to get to. First incompletion of the game for Leidner. Now they give it to Smith. Short gain, it'll be third and long, but now let's check in with Chris Cotter in the studio again. Hey, 
All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Obviously, tons of eyes on that one in the Big Ten. It's Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines look for the exclamation point on their turnaround. Now third and seven. Leidner rolls to the right. Here comes pressure. Throws off his back foot. And complete. K.J. May goes down to make the grab. And you can tell, Eamon, they're not super confident their offensive line can hold up versus this defensive front. So what you're seeing is they're getting Leidner outside the pocket. Malik Collins still is able to get a shot on Leidner, but a pretty nice throw on the run to his best wide receiver, his go-to guy, K.J. May. Taking some hits. Look, he's a tough kid. And again, he's not a guy that people don't want to give him a lot of credit, but he's a tough quarterback. He plays through injuries. That was a nice pass. Now the fullback, Mike Thomas. And they run the reverse to May. And he gets outside for the first down. Jonathan Rose finally brought him down, but a nice stutter step move by May for a few extra yards. 12 yards on the reverse. It was a good job. They got... Minnesota got Nebraska's defense looking the wrong way here. You see they're thinking the handoff's going to go to the running back Smith and they go with the jet sweep around the other side to KJ May. First and 10 now from the Nebraska 48. Smith to the right of Leidner. Off to play fit. They're finding Carter. Carter inside the 30. Still on his feet at the 20, now changes directions. Eric Carter already has a touchdown and makes an explosive play there. 31 and yards. And Amen, it's not a sin to give up a 10-yard route, but it is a sin to have bad leverage on defense and allow a 10-yard gain to turn into a 25-yard gain. You see the Nebraska defensive backs turned around. They don't know where your leverage is. You got to know if you come up on the on one side, you know your safety, your cornerback is coming from the other way. That's how you keep them long games from happening. And when you and Mark Banker started speaking that special language, you defensive guys talked. That was one of the big <laughs> words, leverage. Mark Banker, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, trying to fix this pass defense. Now in the eye is Thomas and Smith. Wider to the fullback, Thomas. Inside the 10, brought down by Kalu. But Rocky, what exactly do you mean by leverage and open field tackle? Well, at first we'll see this the play right here, the, just a little flat route to the fullback, Thomas, who they like to get him the ball in the, in the flat like that, but leverage. Look, you got if you're a cornerback, you know if you come up to the outside, you've got to know where your help is coming from the inside, whether it's a linebacker or a safety. If you get a little too nosy, you try to make a play, that's where those big gashes can come. May, top of your screen to the left, but they keep it on the ground. Smith brought down by Josh Banderas, playing his first game since the Miami game. As the junior linebacker out of Lincoln has been banged up. Yeah, they're sure happy to have Josh Banderas back. Uh, you know, his leadership, and he's hoping, or they're all hoping he can pick up where he left off. He had a great Miami game. He's been injured a little bit. This week practiced and was able to go. Now first and goal from the seven. May, bottom of your screen to the right. Now in motion. Back to the reverse. He's got a blocker. Another stutter step move, and this time it results in a touchdown. The exact same play they ran earlier works again. Well, they line up most of their personnel on the right and then just bring everybody back across the field to the left. It's all about, in this case, offensive leverage. As you said, they ran this play earlier, but this time they get the benefit of having the fullback out in front with a nice block, just give them a little bit more room for May to get in the end zone. Nick Hart, number 45, leading the way. And Santosa with the extra point. Minnesota with the drive it needed. 76 yards and eight plays, two of them by number one, KJ May finds the end zone. Minnesota down by three.
All right, Chris, thanks. Obviously, the Sooners doing a better job of bouncing back than the Wildcats. And now let's take a look at this week's AP Top 10, brought to you by Chick-fil-A and Baylor. Again, no problem scoring points against West Virginia. And a bunch of games in progress already. Alabama leading Texas A&M 14-3, and the big one in the Big Ten. Michigan out to the early lead, but Utah with a big game tonight coming up on ESPN 10 Eastern against Arizona State. Yeah, huge one there. A lot of folks are liking what Arizona State's doing. You can maybe upset the Utes here tonight, but then TCU got tested a little bit last week versus K-State. We were able to get the victory. They're still rolling. Rockies adopted team, the Ohio State Buckeyes, coming up later tonight on ABC at home against Penn State. Santoso on the kick. Nelson and Mosley back to receive for Nebraska. to go and as we mentioned a great crowd on hand a full house once again and Rocky they're getting used to this capacity crowd thing here with the Gophers. They really are I think it's becoming a home field advantage here but it helps when you bring in a historic program like Nebraska so this is becoming a rivalry obviously Nebraska just joined the Big Ten back in 2011 but uh, beautiful stadium here and you see yeah you see some red but you see a lot of maroon and gold as well. Nebraska fans watching this game, so that's nice. Four straight. We've been moving to about 334 straight. But Jerry Kill has certainly, you know, changed the culture and changed the expectations. And you know, in a pro town, you have to win to get fans, and that's what they have done here under Jerry Kill. Janovich and a Zigbo in the backfield. Armstrong with time. Down the sideline. Complete. Brandon Riley out muscles Myrick and makes the grab. And Riley is known for his speed. He's probably the fastest wide receiver they have. But the best thing he does here, he fights for the ball in the air. Look, it's not always going to be easy to make a catch out there. Sometimes you got to go up and get his pretty nice covers. But Riley just fights back, comes back to the football, and out jumps, out jumps Myrick to get it. 35 yards on the play, sets it up at the Minnesota 41. Zigbo in the backfield, gets it here. Maybe the yard. They like what they've seen from the freshman out of Texas, power back, change of pace kind of guy. Yeah, it really is. They got, as you said, they're kind of a running back by committee approach. They like Nubi a lot, but the freshman is Zigbo doing a good job. You also see Imani Cross. He's more of the bigger back. Zigbo had 70 yards and a touchdown on seven carries against Illinois. He stays out there for second and nine. Four wide receivers. Over the middle, complete. Westerkamp for a first down. Derek Murray in coverage, but an 11-yard pickup for the junior out of Chicago. Jordan Westerkamp again. That's his go-to guy. They're, they're roommates. Been roommates for about three or four, four years here. But just a nice job with the stem and then the skinny post to the inside. And Armstrong puts the ball in the money. Now from the Minnesota 29. Motion. Hand off to Zigbo. Falls forward for an extra yard. Pick up a two. Cochran with the tackle. Celestine in on the play as well. The Brass are starting to chip away a little bit this defensive rim front. We talked about Steven Richardson, big number 96 in there from Minnesota. Okay, back on the field after not playing last week. Now they go to the I formation. Zigbo. Set up his blockers to make it third and manageable. And this is what, if you're Nebraska, you were looking for in Minnesota, hoping you wouldn't be in. Absolutely. That play looked like Nebraska in 1995, you know, with the fullback, the little 
guard pull right up the middle. Again, this, this system that they run here is based a lot on the pass and timing and all that, but the Cornhusker way is to run the football. That's what the fan base wants. They're doing a decent job here so far today. So third and two. Carter, they had lined up as the fullback. Now they changed the formation with Amani Cross and Janovich and Armstrong. He's going to keep it himself. He gets the first down. Brought down by Celestine. And you think that was a design run, or did he make up his mind not to throw now, it? It looked like he had the fullback in the flat, but the problem was Antonio Johnson, the safety, goes and covers up Amani Cross. So smartly, Armstrong just pulls the ball down. And that's what's so hard, again, those dual threat quarterbacks you go you, you stay on your guy you cover him and then the quarterback beats you with a run you come off and then they dump it to him makes it tough Armstrong able to get his shoe back on so first and ten from the 14 back to the I formation and newbie back on the field but they give it to the fullback Janovich gets inside the 10 Janovich had that 55 yard touchdown run and it's really been amazing Rock. we talked about it six yards in his career before that Southern Miss game and in the last three games, 174 yards on 19 carries. The bulldozer. He is, and Riley's told us, he said, he's one of our best all-around football players on this team. He's their best special teams player, and now he's doing a great job not only blocking, but also carrying the rock. So five yards on that play. Second and five from the nine. Here's Newby. Finds the alley. Gets outside and will score again. Terrell Newby, his second touchdown of the ball game, 69 yards, now nine yards. What an excellent job by Newby on that play. The play was designed to go to the right. I don't know how he saw, he used that great vision he had. Saw a little bit of daylight off to the left. We'll get a look at the replay. They hand him the ball, supposed to go to the right. He just sticks his right foot in the ground and somehow sees that space off to the left, takes it all the way to the house. Two Gophers going for him, bumped into each other. So now Drew Brown on to uh, another extra point. And Nebraska answers. So a strong drive from the running game specifically and the quarterback, Tommy Armstrong. But Terrell Newby with his second touchdown of the ball game. Cornhuskers back up by 10. Welcome back to Minneapolis. A beautiful fall weekend here in the Twin Cities for some college football. I wish Rocky, the Midwest native, called me ahead and told me to bring my sweater and my <laughs> jacket. I was underprepared, but uh, so a great was weekend. I. And you see Tommy Armstrong had a solid drive. They're retaping his ankle there. Now May. Stop before he can get to the 15. <laughs> And in the last scoring drive, Armstrong did, did a nice job. See what he's doing there, getting his, his ankle taped up a little bit. So Minnesota with the ball back, back down by 10 when we return to TCF Bank. Slater and Rocky, uh, so far it's been a tough encore for the freshman uh, Shannon Brooks as Nebraska leads 24 to 14 a week ago, 176 yards and a touchdown against Purdue. Yeah, and Jerry Kill's system, if you put the ball on the turf, you're not going to play, especially if you're a freshman running back. Looks like he may actually get back on the field here for the first time since that first quarter fumble. Again, Rodney Smith was sick a week ago, so Brooks got more of the carries. Today, Smith is healthy, and Brooks was banged up during the week. Two runs, four yards so far for the true freshman out of Georgia. Now they swing it out to Wolotarski. Hurdles one man. Brought down shy of the 20 by Byerson Cockrell. Another steady game. All right, coming up at the half, we're going to have the David Busters halftime report. Robert Smith, the Butch Davis will join me. We'll talk about Michigan in progress right now over against Michigan State. That's a good one on ESPN. Also, the Tide rolling against A&M. We'll show you how they're getting there. And an upset, Miss Ole Miss earlier in the day. What's going on with Memphis and some of these other American Athletic Conference teams? That's coming up. David Buster's halftime. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Looking forward to, to that. So, yeah, the way college football is, the parody and the playoff, you got to have your phones and all your computers working to keep up with it. And this time they were ready for that. And it was Cockrell coming up to make the tackle. Nice job in the open field by Byerson Cockrell. 
He was their leading tackler last week. He was a guy, remember, he gave up the, the Hail Mary to BYU. Could have gone in the tank, but coaches are liking his mental toughness. He's playing well. Loss of two. Second TFL of the season. Flags now before the snap. Start. Offense for 71. Five yard penalty, second down. It was just a good job by Cockrell seeing where the ball was going and he broke before the ball was in the air. That's the key. If you can have your eyes on the quarterback, know where the ball is going and break before the throw is delivered, that's what enables you to make big plays like that. Now second to 17, now they give it to the freshman. Can't get back to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be third and long for Mitch Leidner. Keeper Minnesota is going to be keeping this game within close enough of a range where they can still rely on the run game. Yes, Mitch Leidner is doing a good job passing, but that's certainly not their strength of this team. But if the score gets too much of a deficit, they're going to have to lean on the passing game. 16 of 17 looking to throw here. Now he's forced out of the pocket. And he's brought down well shy of the first down. Jonathan Rose doing a good job of avoiding the block and coming up to make the tackle. And now Nebraska takes a timeout to get the ball back. Talking about all the big games in the Big Ten today. Number one, Ohio State getting a test on Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. The Buckeyes, of course, led by the top rusher, Ezekiel Elliott, facing a stout Nittany Lions defense ranked 14th in the FBS, Penn State against top-ranked Ohio State and Columbus tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Rocky, you one of those guys say, hey, look, they were number one in August. I'm going to keep voting them number one. They're my preseason number one. I can't drop them. Well, their schedule certainly hasn't been that strong today. They're going to play some tough games. Obviously, you know, playing Penn State is an, is an easy task as well. But uh, certainly, it's a little bit of, of what they did last year. We saw it the year before with Florida State. You know, they went undefeated without the toughest schedule and stayed in the hunt all the way to the playoff. Yes, Rocky does call the Buckeye State home. I sensed that a little bit there on that last <laughs> part of the argument. Now Mortel on to punt. Pearson L back to receive. Good punt, Pearson L. Oh, makes a bad decision. He lets it go. Instead of making the catch, he lets it go and it rolls all the way down to the six and that's going to change Mike Riley's game plan. I would imagine here 25 seconds left. Yeah, this is going to wind up costing Nebraska about 15, 16 yards of field position. And that's a play that the morning Mirson now makes virtually every time. It's an easy catch to make. Not sure exactly why. Maybe lost in the sun. Who knows? Tune into ESPN to get ready for NFL Sunday first. Catch the NFL Insider Sunday edition with week six injury news, fantasy updates, and early breaking stories at 10 a.m. Eastern. Then at 11 a.m., Boomer and the boys get you all ready to go with Sunday NFL Countdown. Catch them both on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. So they still come out in the shotgun from the six, but they give it to Newby. Maybe gets a yard. Certainly, with a, with a 10 point lead, they will head to the locker room and let the clock run out. So, a strong first half for Terrell Newby, Tommy Armstrong, and the Nebraska offense. They lead by 10. We'll hear from Jane Slater with Coach Riley coming up on the Dave and Buster's halftime report. It's 24 14 at the half. Now, let's go to Chris Cotter in the studio. At the end of the first half, they will get it to start the third. Santosa will kick for Michigan. Nelson and Mosley back to receive for Nebraska. This goes deep into the end zone for a touchback. So the Cornhuskers will start on the 25, but now let's check in with Jane Slater down on the field. Hey guys, well I checked in with Jerry Kill. You know, I was wondering why we haven't seen much of Shannon Brooks. Last week against Purdue, he had 17 carries for 176 yards. And of course, that crazy third quarter 71 yard run. He said there's nothing there after that fumble. He didn't bench him or anything like that because of it. We'll probably see more of him. It was just Rodney Smith has been doing a good job against this defense. He said the one thing he did tell his team is, look, we've had an offensive rhythm. We're going to keep that going, but we've really got to get some stops here in the second half. Guys, back to you. All right, Jane, thanks. So first and 10 from the 25 for Armstrong. 
with Newby in the backfield, twins to the right. Now Riley in motion, but it goes to Newby. He cannot find a crease, driven back by Celestine and Ian Day. And again, the key, Rocky, it's so simple, you got to afford the Minnesota looking to force them to third and long. Yeah, they do. they got to force them third and long. That's what Travis Clays, their defensive coordinator, told us a bunch yesterday. And again, as we talked about in the first half, it's a 10-point ball game right now with the way Minnesota plays. It's that ground game. You start getting a three and four score deficit, they can't play to their identity. Here comes Minnesota bringing pressure off the edge. Picked up. And Riley makes the grab. Ian Day with the coverage. Right at the marker. Mike Riley looking for that balance. Now it's going to be third and short. But leaning on Terrell Newby in the running game in the first half. But again, I think it's their their effectiveness with the pass game that's allowed their run game to get to get going. Again, that's kind of opposite of the way most teams are. They want to run to be able to pass. Nebraska in this system needs to pass to open up things for the run game. So Janovich and Newby. It's Janovich, the fullback, and he is driven back by Jack Lynn. That's a great job by Jacqueline. Again, that fullback handoff is such a quick hitting play. Those linebackers have got to be ready for that ball carrier to be on them right now. Jacqueline, a great sized linebacker, six foot three, 238 pounds, stood up the big fullback Janovich. You see, this play gets on you real quick, bam, but you see the linebacker fill the hole. Great form tackle. It's a great stop there for Minnesota's defense to start the second half. Harden back to receive the Sam Fultz kick. It's a good one at the 24 gets by the first man gets by the second man driven driven down to the ground from behind not after a 16 yard return and tonight it's a huge SEC showdown between undefeated top 10 teams on college football presented by Hilton. No Will Greer so Treon Harris the dual threat will take over the Florida offense and of course they'll look to slow down the Heisman front runner Leonard Fournette and the sixth ranked Tigers. It's Florida LSU tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Thomas and Smith in the backfield with Leidner. It's Smith. Up the middle for maybe a couple. So now Smith comes out, and as Jane mentioned, some more playing time for Shannon Brooks. And kids, if you're watching at home and you're wondering what that is, that's called a huddle. And if you're born after, <laughs> before, after 1990, you may not know exactly what that is. We see so many non-huddling teams in college football. But look, Jerry Kill told us he likes those 10 linemen, those 10 players looking back into the eyes of that quarterback. Now Leidner's going to keep it himself off the quarterback draw. He looked to the left, but that... Felt like a design quarterback run, so now it'll be third and long. It's certainly a different ball game than it was last week for Minnesota, trying to run the ball up the gut. Defensive front, those two tackles we talked about, Vincent Valentine and Malik Collins doing a good job of plugging up the middle. I think they got to continue to pepper the outside and get those, that defense to spread out a little bit, then maybe toward the fourth quarter, start hitting the inside runs. Greg McMullen, junior out of Akron, also playing inside. So now Smith in the backfield on third and seven. Off to play fake. Man is open, complete to May. In Nebraska territory, a Minnesota first down. Nate Gary on the coverage and the tackle, but a 13-yard pickup for K.J. May. And there it is, the play-action pass game. When you can run the ball, the next thing you do is you do the, go to the play-action. Pocket looked pretty good there for Leidner. Good job. He's a tall body guy. Kept his eyes downfield. Found the wide receiver. Now Joe Bjorklund, the left guard, had to come off the field. So John Christensen, the fifth year senior. And that's key because this is a very banged up Minnesota offensive line. Got to wonder about the depth of them. And they changed the formation on the fly. They got a lineman wide up. They fake it to him. Nebraska ready for the 
unique formation, but they put out yeah, it was ben, ben Lauer. Yeah, Ben Lauer. And you see that more. You see that in, in the NFL, teams are doing that now. You just give the defense a, a crazy look. You'll see at this, they'll, they'll come to the set and then break forward, and you see four guys move. They get the, the tackle Ben Lauer off to the right, but Nebraska's defense was not fooled. Had good coverage in the secondary and also on the line as well. More confusing for the play-by-play -play announcer <laughs> than the defense, apparently. It's always a tough one. You see those linemen go out wide. Now Smith on second and 13. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be third and long again for Leidner and the Gophers. There's just so many bodies inside there for Nebraska's defense. Playing that quarters coverage Mark Banker likes where you get those eight, nine guys in the box. There you see Jack Gangwich. He's back helping this Nebraska defensive line. Missed a bunch of time with the elbow injury. Going up against the big boys. Going up against a patchwork offensive line for Minnesota. Their sixth different starting lineup in seven games. Now May in motion. Leidner rolls to his left. And it looked like Wolotarski never saw it coming. And you know what? We saw that earlier with the, the punt right before halftime. Looked like it maybe the sun may have gotten the eyes of the poor De Mornay personnel. And I think the same thing happened. The sun is right at that angle. Where you see the wide receiver looking back, may have got caught up in the in the sun a bit. Well, Pearsonell's going to have to get his shades or some eye black because he's back there. <laughs> or hope that it's kicked into the shade. Mortel on for another punt. He had nine in one game against Colorado State. Another high one into the sun, and Pearsonell decides to let it go again. And a great job of coverage by Myrick to step back out of the end zone and avoid the end line, excuse me, the goal line. And he downs it inside the one. So Pearsonell again decides to let it go, and Myrick set up shop and made the play. Nebraska at the one when we return. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the U.S. Army. Find out if you'd make the cut at GoArmy.com slash team. No, Rocky, you can't go there yet. You have to wait until the game. <laughs> Come on. There's a look at Sudnut Donuts, located in Dickey Town, and the name of the donut that student is eating is Girls Love Beyonce. Who doesn't? And, of course, Rocky, on the menu, your favorite, the Flex. The Flex, absolutely. It's a, a new donut shop located in Dinky Town, opened up by a recent Minnesota grad. Let's just say we're, I'm happy we're staying nowhere near there because I probably would have put back about six or seven with my coffee this morning. They got some wild names up here in the Twin Cities. Dinky Town, girls love Beyonce donuts. <laughs> so now the Cornhuskers coming off their first three and out of the game. If they go three and out here, Minnesota will get great field position. And now they have Seathen Carter in the backfield, move him over. And then Janovich takes his spot. And they give it to the fullback. He pushes it out, maybe, to the three. But talk about Mortel, the first team all Big Ten punter a year ago, and the play made by Myrick. These are plays that change games. Well, they, they certainly are. And if you're Nebraska, obviously you'd love to get out, get out of being buried back here, but you at least want to get some room for your punter to be able to get off a safe punt without giving Minnesota a too good a field position. Banged up Minnesota defense going without Cody Pope, their leading tackler, the linebacker. Now Amani Cross in the backfield. Second and nine from the two. They give it to Cross. Powers his way across the five. And now that's going to set up a manageable third down, so a good job by the power back, the senior out of Georgia, pushing the pile. Yeah, Amani Cross, six foot one, 240 pounds. He's kind of more of their short yardage guy. Obviously, this is a situation where you want to get him in. All right, Mike Riley, also known as Rocky Boyman, up in the booth. What do you call on third and two? Look, I, I think right now either doesn't look like Janovich is out on the field, so I maybe expect Armstrong to get outside the pocket, and if the throw's not there, a high percentage throw isn't there, maybe he runs forward, picks up the first down with his legs. Trips to the left. Armstrong looking to throw for now. In the pocket, finds Westerkamp. First down, Nebraska brought down by Eric Murray. The ball came loose, but well after he was down. And that was a great job by Westerkamp. Eric Murray 
is their best lockdown cornerback, a future first round draft pick most likely. And a good job by Armstrong. Pocket wasn't perfect. It was pretty good. A little bit of pressure in his face, but still finds the open wide receiver again against one of the best cover cornerbacks here in the Big Ten. You see Westerkamp go down hard. You see him favoring that left shoulder on the sideline. So first and ten for Nebraska on its own 14. Play fake to Newby. Looking for more. Complete. And Myrick throws him out of bounds. 20 yard pickup by Alonzo Moore. It was a good job. You see Moore coming down in motion. And then Jalen Meyer had a big game last week. Just gets a little bit turned around. It's great timing on that play. That's what this offense is all about timing. Armstrong gets outside the pocket, gets that clear view, and hits more pass. And secondary going without Ace Rogers and Demarius Travis. So now first and 10 from the 34. With this drive starting inside the one. Now the fly sweep to Riley. And there's flags. And there could be a late hit there. No flag on the hit by Murray, but two. It's going to be on Newby making the block as Riley turned up field. Holding offense number 34. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. The fans saw it, and for Minnesota's sake, so did the refs. Yeah, Newby on that play is. Riley was getting around there. Newby basically tackled. You see the left of the side, your left side of your screen. Newby right there. He tries to get the outside guy hooked, but winds up just tripping, tripping the outside leg, and with a tackle more or less. First Nebraska penalty of the ball game wipes out a 14-yard gain. And yes, grabbing the ankle is not proper blocking. Absolutely not. But that's crucial, just the first penalty for Nebraska, because penalties have, have killed this team at times this year. Trips to the left, Westerkamp back out there. Newby in the backfield, first and 20 from the 24. Over the middle to Pearson L. Across the 35, Antonio Johnson with the tackle. And I really feel like Armstrong is getting in a rhythm. He looks comfortable back there. Again, we talked at the beginning of the game. They're simplifying this game plan. And what you do when you when you simplify a game plan, you take all the, the things you have to practice and you wind up working on the things you're good at. You're really doing a good job of finding these little in, you know inside slant routes. That one goes to DeVorne Pearson now. He's also hit Western Camp on him. Doing a good job today. That's what Danny Langsdorf told us this week. We need to find him completions. We need to heat him up. He's locked in right now on this drive. And he finds Moore again. So Alonzo Mourning, Alonzo Moore winning that bot battle with Eric Murray right now. He was. 22 yard pickup. And Armstrong had done fairly well at the beginning of the year, but the last two games he's been off. Again, as we talked about, 35% completion percentage the last two ball games, but. You get the sense he's comfortable now, getting into a rhythm, as you said, getting heated up here. Now he can take that momentum and keep going on the drive here. Eric Murray a week ago held D'Angelo Yancey to, without a catch, but having his hands full with Alonzo Moore. Now Armstrong on the keeper. Gets a block, breaks a tackle. Inside the 30. Pushed out of bounds by Celestine. But a great decision by Armstrong to hold on to it. He picks up 25. Yeah, he's so dangerous again as we've talked about him creating with his legs. Play looks to be pretty much dead, but then, you know, he breaks tackles. He's good in the open field. Not exactly is how Mike Riley's used to having this kind of quarterback, but he's playing well. Good block by Sam Cotton. Eighth play of the drive that started on the one. Swing it out to Westerkin. Gets by Johnson. It's hit up. Knocked out of bounds by Myrick, but not after he picks up the first down. And it's good they're getting Westerkin inv back involved in the game. He just has three catches the last two games. He's been the go-to guy. So far, he's done a good job. The ball just barely gets over the fingertips of the defender. But again, when, when a quarterback has rapport with a wide receiver, they get in rhythm, and that's the guy, Westerkin, and Armstrong, they got the connection. First and goal from the nine on a drive that started on the Nebraska one. Minnesota bringing pressure off the edge. And they get to Newby behind the line of scrimmage up the middle. 
Scott Ekbe in on the play. Hendrick Ekbe as well. And this defense knows they have got to get short up and at least just try to get a field goal forced here before this game gets, gets out of hand. Westerkamp and Pearsonell to the right. Stanley Morgan Jr. to the left. Off the play fake. They have Carter open. He reaches for the pylon. Inside the one they mark it. Carter wants a touchdown. Will we take another look upstairs? And that's a nice play because we've seen that action before of them bringing the the, the Mornay personnel around. Let's get a look at and see if he got in. Nebraska fans that have made the trip want that to go upstairs and be looked at. It looked like it hit the pylon. See his hands down. That doesn't matter. Yeah. But does that ball break the play there before the right knee hits? See if this one gives us a better angle. So it'll go upstairs to Steve Newman, our replay official, take his first review of the game. And that's your good point by you, Rocky, because you see the pylon move. And as fans watching it, you always say, touchdown, pylon moved. But does the ball hit the ground before the pylon moves? Well, that's a, it looked like it. That, that's going to be the question is do the referees think that, that ball got extended enough across to break that plane before his right knee goes down out of bounds? Now, again, the call on the field was out of bounds at the one. So do we have indisputable video evidence to overturn that and give Carter a touchdown? That looks like the ball crosses the plane. Now, the pylon technically does, it, it's technically is part of the play. So if you just hit the pylon, and get but it inside. The, but is the ball on the ground before it hits the pylon? I think is the question. Right there, crosses a plane and there's nothing down. Yeah, I think that might be a touchdown, yep. Nebraska. What a great job of just really staying in the air, using that left hand on the ground as leverage to be able to reach that ball across. Carter, a junior out of New Orleans. for his second career touchdown and first of the season. Cornhusker fans looking at it on the big board. They think they're getting six. That would be huge. Chief and Carter does not have a touchdown on the year. And last year, the tight ends were very underutilized in this offense. Mike Riley traditionally likes getting the tight ends involved. Haven't so much happened this year. Be nice for Carter to get on the board with one. Now this one's taken a while, and we always try to read into it why it's taken so long. Who does that benefit? You would think if it's taken this long, it would benefit Minnesota because they're trying to figure out where exactly to spot the ball because either across the plane or it didn't. Right. Mike Cannon and Steve Newman talking it over. Certainly for Jerry Kill and his offense. Being down 13, if you can hold them to a field goal, is a lot different than being down 17. To your point, again, when they're usually the longer it takes, they're trying to figure out how much time is on the clock and, the, and this and that. So that, you wonder if that's what's going on here. Again, the call on the field is short. Here's After the announcement. Review, the ball hit the goal line before the runner was down, resulting in a touchdown. Please reset the game clock to 425. 425. So Seathen Carter gets his first touchdown of the season and Jerry Kill's deficit becomes even larger. So what a drive for Mike Riley in this offense, Tommy Armstrong Jr. From basically inside their own one, they go 99 yards plus and take a commanding lead on the road against the four and two Gophers. Drew Brown drills home the extra point. And you talk about a quarterback trying to find his rhythm. Tommy Armstrong Jr. finding Seathan Carter. And the Cornhuskers are in control. Up 31-14 on the road as they get the review. Welcome back to Minnesota. And now let's take a look at our Pacific Life Game Summary as we take a look at the numbers for the quarterback and what a defining drive for Tommy Armstrong Jr. It really was. That particular drive, he goes 7 for 7, 83 yards, and the touchdown, obviously. We talked about his rhythm, and that's something he needed to get into. I think the simplified game plan, Eamon, is working. They're just getting nice, easy completions for him, and that's what enabled him to, therefore, hit the deep ball later. The coaches told us, do less, better. So now Matt, Ma May and Myrick back to receive, and you wonder, 
31 14 does that change the offensive game plan for Leidner and the Gophers. Here's Myrick from the four. Sets up his blocks. Gets out to the 30. So good field position for the Gophers down by 17. Let's send it down to Jane for some news off the field concerning Minnesota football. Well, well, guys, it does look like things are going right for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, which is important for them because so many things have gone wrong for them this season. All four of the Cornhuskers' losses have come in the last minute or in the overtime of the game. Well, that could be deflating and divisive for a program that has five national titles and over 800 wins. Riley told me ahead of this one, it hasn't gotten the team down. He pointed to Sunday, the day after the 23-21 loss to Wisconsin. He had more than 50 players show up for voluntary lifting. He said it basically showed that this team was still engaged and they still bought into the program and it's showing here today as they have the 17 point lead guys pressure, back to you pressure up the middle thanks Jane and almost leads to a disastrous play as Cockrell didn't know to go for the tackle or the interception and, and that's the thing you know Jane was talking about you, you always want to re read the body language of the players and are they are they showing up late to things are they you know, are they hanging their head a little bit? But uh, according to Mike Riley and folks, this team is not that way at all. They're showing up the voluntary lifts. They're still energized, and they still feel good about this program. Brooks in the backfield. He gets it on second and ten, and a short gain will set up third and long. But it's one thing to be two and four. It's when all four are demoralizing losses coming on the last play that the opponents had the ball. Yeah, the BYU game was kind of a fluke. It's a Hail Mary at the end of the game. But then after that, there was you know a variety of things, some clock management issues, some guys not playing the right technique, and, and they kind of feel snake bitten. But, uh, you know, it, it's certainly, you know, winning obviously makes a difference. You play that whole game and really just the result is a loss. It's still tough to swallow. So now third and six. Pump pressure coming off the edge and he will get dropped. Somehow he held on to the ball, but Jack Genguish hammers him to the turf. Vincent Valentine as well. Well, and Amy, we talked about the deep, the offensive line for Minnesota is so banged up. they got a bunch of different guys in there. Nebraska brings a little bit of pressure. This time it's a twist stunt. And Vincent Valentine comes from the outside. Leiter's trying to get some time to let those routes develop down the field, but just not enough time as Valentine gets to him. McMullen in on the play, but a couple of guys from Nebraska playing banged up. Gangwish and Valentine bringing the heat. So now Pearson out. Back to receive. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. And you see Leidner walking off the field with a trainer. Is it doing some of his left hand? So the delay game penalty pushes Mortel back five more yards. Low kick, Pearson L makes the grab. Looking to set up a block. Now he's going to change direction. A lot of running around to get out across the 40, which is where Nebraska will take over when we return. Nebraska with the ball and in control. Will Mitch Leidner be able to finish this ball game for Minnesota? Back after this. Rocky, there have been plenty of defining, demoralizing moments for Nebraska, but this was a defined, defining moment in this ball game. Yeah, how about a 99-yard touchdown drive? But it's been a little bit of everything. The run game with Terrell Newby. You see Alonzo Moore getting in on the action. The Mornay Pearsonell. Tommy Armstrong has really done a nice job settling in, making plays in the pass game, and also picking up some yards in the run game. And here's the touchdown to Seathan Carter. Just barely gets across and breaks the plane. And now Nebraska with a 17-point lead. Can really load up the run game, I would think, here. A 227 left in the third. Up by three possessions. And they come out with the eye. Formation Janovich and Newby. They run the reverse to Moore. It's a block on the edge, gets by one tackler and gets out near midfield. 
Brought down by Ekpe. And again, it hasn't been that complex of, of, of an offensive game plan. It's been a lot of those jet sweeps like we just saw there, some inside runs and a little bit of play action and maybe getting Armstrong outside the pocket, but nothing too crazy. So the Minnesota offense needs to get going while the Nebraska offense in both halves executing at a high level. Second and two now from the 49. Off the play fake. Deep down the middle into double coverage. And there's a flag. Johnson never turned around and he held up more. Underthrown ball which worked against Johnson. Well, he, Armstrong got some pressure at his feet right as he was getting ready to lay into that ball. Get a shot of the pocket. Pass Initially, Defense, he had 11, a decent pocket, but this, penalty, automatic first down. this route is so far down the field, it looked like he couldn't really drive into that throw. A little bit of contact there and selling the flag while going down. That's a you they gotta work at that at training camp. They got <laughs> or wide receiver camp. You, you gotta sell it. Yeah, you you gotta be a good actor at times and Minnesota fans, we're used to seeing Chris Carter do that. That's right, that's exactly Metro, right. <laughs> but, you know, that's a tough spot for Johnson on the underthrow with Moore going back for it. So they mark it at the 36. There's Janovich. Overpowering Devontre Campbell, who's been quiet. You know, some of these guys who had big games a week ago against Purdue, Campbell, Richardson, we haven't really heard from him. I'm saying Steven Richardson, you just mentioned it. He's a guy that's, you know, really makes a lot of plays and is a disruptor out there. Really hasn't been much of a factor in today's game. Campbell last week, seven tackles and interception. Richardson, four tackles and a sack. And Nebraska on the move again. Complete over the middle. Jordan Westerkamp. <laughs> down by Johnson. So after being taken away by the last two Big Ten opponents, Western can't be able to be a factor here today. And that was a good job there by Tommy Armstrong. He sees the wide receiver open, bang, pulls the trigger, doesn't hesitate, hits the open guy when he has the space. So, so much for me saying they're going to load up on the running game on this drive. Now newbie in the backfield. 40 seconds left in the quarter. Armstrong keeping it. And he cannot get away from Jonathan Celestine. One yard gain. And they do not have to run a play here in, in the final seconds of the third. Mike Riley says, let's go to the other end. And let's try to finish. Up by 17. They have dominated the third quarter here on the road. Now they just have to finish the final 15 minutes of regulation. Nebraska with a second and nine from the Minnesota 18 to start the fourth quarter. They made the trip from Nebraska and so far they're very happy they did. The Cornhuskers in control after three. Sphere for college football. Great crowd on hand. Plenty of Nebraska fans making the trip. Maybe sticking around to see the Chiefs and the Vikings play tomorrow. but. Those in maroon and gold need a stop. They need a stop and they need a turnover. Newby in the backfield on second and nine from the 18. Now Riley in motion. Armstrong's going to keep it himself. Tripped up at the 15 by Eric Murray. So that'll set up third and medium. And now, Rocky, this is when head coaches and offensive coordinators earn their money. You're in control up by 17. Do you play for the field goal? I, I think you play for the field goal right here. You're already up 17 with a chance to go up 20. I, I think you do. You play conservative, run the clock here. And the main thing you do is you tell your team, look, hold on to the football. The really the only thing that can get Minnesota back in this game is a turnover. Third and five. Does Armstrong keep it? Pumps once. Flag on the play. Tip. Call. De Mornay Pearsonell, if it stands. He tipped it to himself, and it'll stand. Personal foul against the Gophers. 
And a top 10 nominee play delivered by DeMornay Pearsonell. Defense number 55. The result of the play is a touchdown. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And this is one of those plays where the coach goes, no, 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 yes. DeMornay Pearsonell, those two Minnesota Gophers around that, that's not a ball you probably should have thrown, but a great job of concentration by the playmaker DeMornay Pearsonell. And that's not exactly Harold Carmichael going up to get it. He's 5'9". <laughs> I mean. Well, and, and, and Brian Bodie Calhoun's a great cornerback. You know, they got some good players in that secondary. That's a heck of a catch. Brown with the extra point. So a top 10 nominee, more importantly for Nebraska, possibly the dagger. 21 unanswered points from the Cornhuskers since 155 left in the first. here they've been waiting for DeMornay Pearsonell to get used to this offense and he's just made it 38 14 with a tremendous catch and I can't believe he threw this bar they even called the play there's double coverage throws into two very good defensive backs but just look it's the concentration by an athletic guy like DeMornay Pearsonell doesn't give up on the play pulls it down He's not very much a part of this offense. Tommy Armstrong now nine for nine in this half. Two touchdowns, 108 yards, but number 15 bailed him out on that one. Now May from the nine. Across the 20. Brought down hard at the 25. Let's check in with Chris Carter back in the studio. All right, Eamon Rocky, let's go to the big house. Michigan and Michigan State over on ESPN. Sparty fighting back here. Pump fake, Connor Cook. It's McGarrett Kings for the score. It's 17-14 right now. Michigan leading, but Michigan State coming back. All right, Chris, looks like that one in Ann Arbor is going to go down to the wire, and that's what we were expecting here. I, certainly a surprising score right now. Not that Nebraska's on top, but dominating the Gophers at home. Another rollout for Leidner. Lofts it up, and that gets picked off. No, nope, incomplete. Looked like Cockrell brought it into his hands and then it rolled in. Let's check in with Jane Slater for more on Pearsonell. Well, guys, Coach Mike Riley told me that they really anticipated using DeMornay Pearsonell quite a bit this year. But you see, he suffered a broken foot in fall practice. In fact, he said he didn't realize he injured it, just felt it give out and thought it was a little sore and continued to play through it. But once he finally got it x-rayed, he realized that he was going to be out for about six weeks. Riley said that was tough because it meant that they had to make changes to their offense midstream. But you're seeing him back here today. Offensive coordinator Danny Langstor told us he's a playmaker and a threat when you get him out there, Matched on up on the corner one on one, and today he's helping the Corn Huskers extend their lead to 24 with that touchdown before the break, guys. All right, Jane, thanks. Well, well, she's certainly right. Look, this offense has just relied too much on Jordan Westerkamp, the wide receiver. There wasn't really that compliment. Stanley Morgan was pretty good, and so was Alonzo Moore, but nothing like the playmaking ability of the Mornay Pearsonell. So they're certainly happy to have him back. It certainly adds another dimension to their offense. Now on the flip side, Mitch Leidner started the ball game 17 of his first 18 since then. His last five passes have been incomplete. Third and 10. With time, has a man open. And that stops that streak as K.J. May makes the sliding catch. 13-yard pickup. Again, scoring fast is just not something that's really in the identity of Minnesota. They're used to controlling the game on the ground, controlling the clock, keeping it close, and being able to hang in there. But uh, it's certainly a tough task. For this offense. When you look at the number of the wide receivers outside of KJ May, you wonder who the deep threat is once they look for that quick strike. Pump, man wide open down the middle, but they go down the sideline instead. And incomplete. Now, I know it's easier up here, but Brandon Lingen looked wide open down the middle of the field. Yeah, he was certainly wide open. If, if Leidner would have the time, we'll see Brandon Lingen release here and go really just straight down the middle of the field. Just a little bit of pressure, certainly not enough, but I think he was fixed in on the wide, wide receiver there and didn't find Lingen at all. Looking for Still, the freshman. So now second and 10. Two backs, Thomas and Smith. Fake the reverse to Carter, throw it back to Lingen. Needs a block, and he gets it. 
into Minnesota, into Nebraska territory, down to the 36. Myers and Cockrell brings him down, but a good block on the perimeter springs the tight end for 26 yards. And that was a great job of misdirection. Everyone's eyeballs are going to the top of the screen there, and they leak the tight end out late. And get the, the, the ball into the hands of the six foot five, 247 pound Lingen. And it's a wonder why they're still huddling at this point. I get it. They're a huddling team, but you're down a bunch of points here. You got to start putting some plays together and get get some points on the board. Stack the receivers to the right. On the rollout. May makes the grab and goes out of bounds. All right, Rocky, you played linebacker. How does the play fake work when everyone in the stadium knows they have to throw? Well, that, that's the thing is Nebraska's secondary and their linebackers got to be smart and know that to get back into this game, they have to put the ball in the air. There's no reason to suck up on that play fake. So the Gophers are in the red zone. But May now with nine catches. But to your point about the huddle, you're yeah, losing I... precious seconds every time. Formation may in motion. Nice grab by Lingen. Touchdown, Minnesota. 19 yards. His third touchdown catch of the season. Finally, some efficient offensive play by Minnesota. Here's a look here. We'll see if he got in. They run the the streak up and then the seven route. It's close. Look like the see if the ball broke the plane before he went out of bounds. You know, yeah, obviously it would have been better had he had the ball in his right hand instead of his left. It's close. Again, call on the field touchdown. Here's your best angle. Knee down there, but again, can't really tell the ball. Yeah, you can't see if the ball broke the plane. No, no. Obviously, the whole ball doesn't have to be across, just a piece of it. Again, his counterpart got a touchdown off a of review after originally ruled down short of the end line, goal line. And this is one of those ones where you, you have to figure it's got to be indisputable, ev indisputable evidence. They called it a touchdown. From all those angles, it doesn't look like anything definitive to be able to overturn that. Steve Newman upstairs. Jerry Kill doing some lobbying, but uh, I'm with you. I don't think we have enough video evidence to take those points off the board. We'll get two angles over here. I think the one on the right side is the best look at it. You can maybe see if the ball broke the plane. And there's obviously in that pause there, the knee is down. But did it break the plane before his right knee hit out of bounds? Matt Leidner had glowing things to say about Brandon Lincoln in this morning in the paper saying he's on his way to not quite there where Max Williams was as a tight end but a better route runner certainly a great future just a sophomore and another lengthy conversation between Mike Cannon and Steve Newman It feels that he came up short, but I don't know if you have indisputable. That, that's evidence. yeah, that's that's kind of where, where I'm at with it. Jerry Kill still selling the line, Judge Daniel Gallagher. Taking quite a bit of time uh, here. <laughs> he's thinking the exact same thing. Not really sure. Here we go. Here comes the announcement. The verdict is in. After review, the runner was out of bounds before breaking the plane of the goal line. The ball will be placed at the one foot line. It will be first down and goal. Please reset the game clock to 12.05. 
I mean, you can see where they would call that, but I thought the fact that they had originally called it a touchdown, there wasn't quite enough evidence, wasn't that perfect camera angle to see. Obviously, they felt differently. Well, not only take a touchdown away from the career statistics of Brandon Lingen, but take up some time here because it'd be first and goal inside the one. Rodney Smith in the backfield. They try the sneak. No signal yet. Now it's a touchdown. So it cost them about 10 seconds, but they get the six points back. You said it cost them a little bit of time, but finally they get it in the end zone. Big body, big body Mitch Leidner takes himself. Keep the offense out there and go for two. Down by 18, you get it to 16, and then you can tie it up with two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Certainly a lot of good things got to happen here for Minnesota to get back in, but a lot of bodies. But he certainly broke the plane. You know, is, is it a question of his knee being down? But obviously not. Now here comes the two-point conversion with 11:52 left to play in regulation. There you see Lincoln in the slot. He's usually the guy down here. May in motion. Looking for May, and they get the two. It is indeed a two possession game as May beat Cockrell. Makes the grab. So there is life in the Gophers. Lingen doesn't get the six, but the quarterback does on the sneak. The Gophers down by two after the two point conversion. Down by two possessions. The Cornhuskers and their fans who made the trip enjoying things so far as they lead 38-22. And now for the latest dish brought to you by Dish. We take a look at some of today's major storylines. And Michigan leads Michigan State 20 to 14 in the third quarter. And that big one in Ann Arbor. Big one tonight in the SEC. How will Florida respond without its starting quarterback? Leonard Fournette on a roll so far. And then the defending champion Buckeyes put their perfect record on the line at home against Penn State. You can see that at 8 Eastern on ABC. So they kick it away deep. And Mosley brings it out. And he gets out to the 15. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. Eamon Alabama built a big lead out in Kyle Field, but here comes Texas A&M. And Kyle Allen is going to find Ricky Seals Jones for the score. Big fella goes up and gets it. All of a sudden, it's 28-20. So the Aggies fighting their way back. All right, Chris, so obviously a big turnaround in that game. And Nebraska hoping there isn't a big turnaround in this game. The offense has been pretty much flawless here in the second half. And they are looking to run some clock here up by 16 on the road. High formation. This is Newby. He has an alley. Gets across the 20, across the 25, out across the 30. So Eric Murray finally brings him down, but not after he rumbles for 16, and they just keep it moving. The last two possessions before that play, they gained 158 yards and two touchdowns, and they're on the move again. Yeah, and I would think they're going to keep the ball on the ground here, keep chewing up that clock, keep sticking the ball to Terrell Newby. Play fake. Looking for more. All right, we're now both 0 for 1 when we said they're going to yeah. run the ball and they throw deep. Speaking of throwing deep, it's an NFC East battle in the week six edition of Monday Night Football. 8 15 Eastern on ESPN. Eli Manning leads the first place G Man against Chip Kelly's Eagles, DeMar Eagles and DeMarco Murray. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Eli Manning coming off. An awesome performance against the 49ers. 41 completions. 
Chip Kelly's name in the news with Southern Cal and South Carolina <laughs> opening up. Now they set up the screen and Newby drops it. Talk about Eli Manning. Last year Danny Langsdorf worked with the Giants was on the Giants staff was the quarterback coach for Eli Manning. You know you see Eli Manning in the second year of Ben McAdoo's offense how much more comfortable and in a rhythm he is and that's what they're hoping happens here in the second half of this season with Armstrong. Yeah and Langsdorf had his work has had his work cut out for him here getting this quarterback to adapt to a new system the entire offense as well such a rhythm passing game. It's taken a while, but today's look their best performance of the year so far. Although very surprised they've thrown it on back to back plays and make that three plays. And another incompletion. Looking for Seathen Carter. I, I got to say, that was a head scratching series there. Uh, I don't really understand was. it at all. You go with a bomb down the sideline, and then you know an another pass there goes behind Seathen Carter. Don't quite get that one. They could have chewed up another couple minutes off that clock there. After the big run by Newby, you thought for sure they were just going to load it up, but Minnesota's going to get it back with 10.58 now on the clock. Harden back at about the 23. High but short. Harden runs out of bounds, making the grab. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has donated millions in scholarship funds. Nebraska fans that have hung around here, you wonder if they start to get nervous. Certainly, as you mentioned, a, a lot of good things still need to happen for Minnesota. But well, it's 16 points, but it'd be a different story if Nebraska was able to get a couple minutes off that clock. It's still just under 11 minutes. Oh, Brooks almost went. Ooh. Kalu with a touchdown saving tackle. Images of last week against Purdue. And remember, Brooks was the spark last week, and he's trying to get something going here in the fourth quarter, breaking tackles because he was just a shoelace away from breaking that one. Go right back to him. Nothing doing. And this is Ross DeZuris makes the tackle. And we have an injured Cornhusker. Looks like Vincent Valentine. He's been pretty much banged up all year. Yeah, he's had a high ankle sprain. Last couple weeks, he was able to come back last week, had a big game, played 50 plays, a couple of tackles for loss, had a sack. He re-injured that high ankle sprain in practice this week, but was still able to go. I wonder if that's the issue here. Here you see Valentine in the middle of the screen with a heavily taped left ankle. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of got rolled up on. And that's going to be key, Amy, because look, remember, remember the identity of Minnesota is that run game. Haven't been able to get it going with those big bodies like Vincent Valentine in the middle. With him out, you wonder if they can take advantage. Minnesota came in averaging 172 yards on the ground, just 61, and with the big deficit looking to throw. May makes the grab. It's going to be short of the first down. Both these teams come in with a lengthy injury report, but really Nebraska, I mean, as Mark Banker, the defense coordinator, said, I'm not coaching players anymore. I'm coaching jersey numbers <laughs> because they all change. Well, it is, especially that, that linebacking court's really tested their depth. It's been a little bit thin. Some guys have had to come and step up. Chris Weber stepped up the last couple weeks, but now he's out. So it's free to Mack and Moladoon. Nice. Still try running up the middle on third and short. He is driven back by Jack Gangwish. You see him playing hurt with that heavily wrapped elbow. Yeah, he injured an elbow. Is that when the last play versus BYU? He's now just kind of getting back to strength. A good job just closing down, keeping his shoulders squared, not letting the running back bounce outside. Nice tackle for loss. So the two yard loss sets up fourth and four for Leidner and the Gophers. Bunch set to the right. Brooks in the backfield. And Minnesota wants to talk things over. Mike Riley looking for a stop when we return. Here, this entire game.
Pearson L with a highlight reel grab. Newby with a huge game, but now they need a def the defense to come up with a stop on fourth and four. Leidner's hit his last five passes. Bunch set to the, the right. Screen. The match protect. With time. First down at the 45. Wolotarski. Some throw there by Leidner all the way across the field, an eight-yard pickup. Well, you can tell they really valued protecting Leidner on that play. Kept the tight end, kept the running back in, gave him just a little bit extra time to find the wide receiver. Big fourth down conversion. So now as we approach the nine-minute mark, first and ten, Minnesota. At the 45. He's been hot, cold, now hot again. Pumps. Here comes pressure. Hit as he throws. Carter makes the grab. Eric Carter out jumped Jonathan Rose and high pointed the ball for a 29 yard pickup. And they got a little bit of pressure on Leiter. Did a good job hanging the pop over there. You see the pump fake. But remember, we talked about it. It's been a little bit while, but this secondary for Nebraska has been suspect all year. Nice job. Going up and pulling down the big catch. Leidner's now hit his last seven pass attempts. First and ten from the 16. I formation. Now they load up to the left. May all by himself to the right. Now Lingen moves over. Into the end zone for Lingen. He overshoots him. Nate Gary with the coverage. And he had Lingen open. I think a nice throw. Would have connected for a touchdown. So that stops the clock with 8.12 to go. He sees a seven route, a nice throw put. I mean, if he hits Lingen in stride, that's a touchdown because the safety was a little bit behind the tight end on that play. Eighth play of the drive coming up, bunch set to the right, May to the left. That's where Leidner's looking. Knocked away at the last second by Rose. That was a good job of Rose just hanging with the play. Looked like that May was going to come down with the catch. We see the right arm of Jonathan Rose at the last second just making sure that ball doesn't get pulled down for a touchdown. And it's a tough play because his back was turned to the quarterback. He didn't know when it was coming, but he reacted well when May's hands went up, Rose's right arm went up, knocked the ball away. Third and ten. Carter, bottom of your screen left. Now trips to the right. That's where Leidner rolls. He's going to throw back. Flag on the play. Lingen makes the grab. Stays in bounds, but we're going to get a call. Nate Gary brings him down, and it's a hold. Holding offense number 71 10 yard penalty replay third down and that was the, the freshman center Tyler Moore we talked about him most of the game he has work cut out for him this time really just takes Malik Collins and body slams him and they had they had something going aim and they brought the tight end kind of a, one of those fall not a fall down play but kind of hid the tight end a little bit brought him back across the formation but now it comes back with a hold so now it's third and 20. You're obviously in four down territory. You try to get all 20 here. What's your play call? No way. I think you try to pick up, you know, five, ten yards here, knowing that you have the fourth down to go for it. Leidner forced out of the pocket. He could run. He decides to run. He gets hammered. So it'll be fourth and long. Josh Banderas returning to the field for the first time since the Miami game. Stopped him in his tracks. Fourth and 15. And they're going to go for the field goal. Two timeouts left, Rockies. Seven minutes. I don't know. I, I think that's kind of tough. Down 16 points go to go for a field goal here. 38-yarder. Kick is good. 
So it's still a two possession game between Nebraska and Minnesota. So they decide to go for three instead of fourth and 15. Welcome back to Minnesota. After being held to 34 points in the first two Big Ten games, Nebraska's exploded for 38, and Tommy Armstrong leading the way. You know, he's certainly been the story today. His play has really it was enabled Nebraska to put the points on the board, throw it on the run. That time to the left, then the back to the right, and finding Ethan Carter later for the touchdown. He's done a good job of getting into rhythm, to simplify some things. This one didn't quite understand the play call, but it seemed to work out. Tommy Armstrong. Here's a Pacific Life game summary coming at you here. It was he's had success both on the inside and the outside. Certainly more yards to the inside, but two for two on the outside for the 41 yards and the two touchdowns. Well, now Nebraska is certainly expecting an onside kick as they have their hands team out there. And, and look, I guess I understand going for the field goal there. If you don't get it, the game's over. But now what you essentially do is if, they, you know, if you don't get the onside kick here, then you could maybe make the argument that it's going to be tough to get back in this game. And now Nebraska's going to take a timeout to talk it over. All right, guys, catch the ball. Now, what, 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 are you, what are you buttoning up here? Well, you just want to see what they're, what kind of you know thing they're setting up there, what, what Minnesota's going to set up. Are they going to go for a high bounce? You know, it looked like the ball was set on the tee sideways, which means it wouldn't be one of those one where you're trying to drive it in the ground and get the high bounce. So after the Arizona State Utah Pac-12 shootout tonight, keep it locked to Sports Center at night for a full recap of the day in College Football Plus. Highlights and post-game coverage from Jays, Royals, and Cubs Mets. It's Sports Center at night after Arizona State Utah on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Nebraska fans that invaded Minneapolis were into that Royals Jays game last night, as you might expect. So now Mike Riley has keeps his hands team out there, obviously, as Minnesota was showing onside kick. And the formation doesn't look any different than before the timeout. We'll see where he positions the ball. Wester Camp, the only corn husker back. They have eight up front, then two. And now they're changing sides. The ball is flat on the tee, usually a spin kind of now situation. Now they change kickers. All for naught. Newby continues his big day. So Nebraska takes over. Now there is a flag, but let's check in with, let's get the explanation. You wonder if Minnesota went off sides with all that, all those moving parts. Unsportsmanlike conduct, sideline interference, Nebraska bench, 15 yard penalty, It'll be first down Nebraska. So they hold on to the ball, the most important thing, yeah, but they'll move back 15 yards. Let's check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. All right, Craig, Chris, thanks a lot. Nebraska looking to salt this one away. They go to Newby right up the middle. And obviously the unsportsmanlike conduct for the, the interference on the sideline will move Nebraska back 15 yards, which certainly helps Minnesota's defense. Minnesota with two timeouts, going to hold on to them as long as they can here. Mike Riley looks like having a hard time seeing the clock and the play clock, looking right back into the sun. Five on the play clock. Right back up the middle. Imani Cross driven back. Under six to play. Minnesota fans starting to make some noise. Third down, Mike Riley was willing to throw it on the last possession. And again, game management. This was what hurt him against Illinois. They couldn't run out the clock against Wisconsin. Certainly is the last drive, putting the ball in the air three times. Doesn't help them here. We'll see if they keep it on the ground. Four wide receivers on third and six. And before the play, a timeout. So they stopped the clock, and you can see the frustration right there. They're second. The last thing in the world. 
The last thing in the world the Cornhuskers wanted to do was stop the clock. Again, talk about a broken record. We've been here before. Yes, exactly. They're in the same situation. That one, the last play of the game, BYU gets the Hail Mary. And then late in the game, after falling behind early, Nebraska got back in it. But then this one versus Illinois, just a bad play call with clock management versus Illinois. And then Wisconsin, they took the lead late with a 55-yarder by Janovich. But Wisconsin gets the ball back, kicks a 48-yarder, and you see again the frustration on the face of Mike Riley. So now 5.25 left to go. They still come out with three wide receivers. Armstrong looking to throw, looking for Westerkamp. What a big-time catch by Jordan Westerkamp. Eric Murray all over him. 27 yards, and I'm shocked by that call, but Westerkamp makes the play. Absolutely shocked. You go to your best wide receiver, but he's covered by the best cover guy for Minnesota. Just a great job of finding the ball in the air. The pocket for Tommy Armstrong was pretty good, and able to get that throw off. He's, uh, he sees that he connected with his wide receiver. Shocked by the call, but it, but it worked. Westerkamp with his sixth catch, now has 76 yards, and now they go eye formation, under five minutes to play. Janovich runs right into Jack Lynn. One yard pickup. Now it is Jerry Kill. Have to start burning timeouts. And he needs the ball back twice. Yeah, he, they're down two scores here and a couple uh, onside kicks, so he's got to got to certainly got to get the ball, but he wants to hold on to him as long as he can. At some point, that clock is tick, tick, ticking away, and obviously Nebraska here is going to try to not snap the ball until it gets below five seconds. Nebraska 204 yards total on the ground. Newby doing most of the bit damage. Now Armstrong's going to call his own number. Plows ahead for a short gain. Jack Lynn again on the tackle. And now Jerry Kill takes a timeout, it looks like. With 3.53 left to go. We stay in the Big Ten later tonight. A test for number one Ohio State on Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. The Buckeyes, led by the top rusher Ezekiel Elliott, will face a stout Nittany Lions defense ranked 14th in the FBS. Penn State versus top-ranked Ohio State and Columbus tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Big one in the Big Ten right now in Ann Arbor, and you figure out, you know, who's got the inside track to win this conference, and you, according to the ESPN Football Power Index, really no surprise that it's Ohio State at 37%, but the Spartans, now again, they're trailing right now, but this is going into today. Right, that's a very good team. He's a little bit banged up here. We'll see how they prevail today, but um, you know, Ohio State, obviously, the, you know, a lot of their strength of their schedule doesn't come until late in the year. Iowa with a pretty convincing performance today against Northwestern. So now third and five, under four minutes to go. Again, looking to throw, and now he keeps. So he doesn't get the first down. Jerry Kill is going to let the clock run. I guess I'm not sure why you call a timeout the play before, and then you don't hear. Still going to let some time eek off this clock. Save one for when he has the ball yeah. back. And Nebraska, Fultz now decides to go back. Set up to hold. 41-yard kick for Brown. He's one for two today. They're not going to get this off. They do. And it's good. Just in the nick of time, Mike Riley gets three more points. Nebraska up 16. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. All right, Amy, we got the On the Scoreboard show coming up here as soon as you guys wrap things up up there in Minnesota. Got a lot to talk about today. Big game up in Michigan, and it's close, too. So we'll see what happens there between the Spartans and the Wolverines. Plus, we had a big upset earlier in the day in Memphis. 
with Ole Miss going down. We'll show you how it went down and a big injury in that game as well. Honda scoreboard coming up. We'll see you then. All right, Chris, looking forward to that. Fultz and Riley smiling. Yeah, yeah, I made you sweat, Coach. I know. We, got, we had it all under control. Well, now Minnesota. You told me to work the clock, didn't you, Coach? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. That, that ball did not look like they were going to get it off. Just in the nick of time. And now Minnesota's back to that same 16-point, two touchdown, two, two-point conversion. Excuse me, one two-point conversion away from time, but... This will be May. Gets out to the 20. Again, Nebraska looking to reverse recent history, not just in 2015, but in this rivalry. We go back to 2013, Nebraska had won 16 straight. But then Philip Nelson to Derek Engel. Then Nelson sneaks in from one yard. Minnesota wins for the first time since 1962. And then last year at Nebraska, the Cornhuskers led 21-7. After a blocked field goal was returned for a touchdown, but then Mitch Leidner got in from two yards out. And then with the Cornhuskers driving late in the fourth, three and Body Calhoun made a tremendous play to strip the ball shy of the goal line. Minnesota holds on to the 28-24 comeback victory. Now Wolotarski gets out of bounds. It was a great job by Wolotarski keeping alive there to get the out of bounds. One timeout left. They need two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. In under two minutes and 50 seconds. Again, working the sideline. There's May for another grab, and he gets out of bounds. Five yard gain, so they're content right now to nickel dime their way up the field, but sooner or later they're going to have to look for a few home run balls, you would think. Early in the year versus TCU, they were able to get a late drive, move down the field pretty quickly. They've got to move fast now, though. And that's out of bounds and incomplete, so that'll stop the clock. Looking for Lingen. Who is the deep threat for Minnesota at this point? Two and a half to play. Here comes pressure. Did Carter make the grab? No, incomplete. Throw was behind him. We make the point, Eamon. That's kind of the problem with this offense. There is no real home run threat. KJ May's a nice wide receiver, but they don't really have that guy that can just take the top off a of defense for a long one down the sideline. They're going to have to find him here with just under 230 left in this game. Wins to the left, May, top of your screen to the right. Now he goes in motion. Nebraska backs off the pressure. And that will be intercepted by Kalu. He could go. The 20, the 10, touchdown Nebraska. Pick six, Josh Kalu. The Cornhuskers are going to get Big Ten win number one. And I always think it's hard when you ask your quarterback to roll out away from his throwing arm because it's just so hard for him to get his shoulders squared around to make an accurate throw. You'll see rolls out to his left. He's got to contort his shoulders all the way around and just makes a bad decision in the end there. There's Kalu underneath the wide receiver, does a nice job. And that's what Nebraska's defense did not do last week. They had their hands on about seven, eight footballs, weren't able to come up with a turnover. And today, finally, they come up with one, probably icing the game. His second pick of the season, he returns it 41 yards for the score. And there will be no heartbreak in Minnesota for Kalu and the Huskers. They'll stop the losing streak to Minnesota. More importantly, they're going to get their first conference win of the season and get some mojo. And this is why they really needed this game, because you look at the rest of their schedule here, you know, you see Michigan State down there later on in the year. You see Iowa, certainly some tough games. And I think the most important thing for Nebraska is, is they're finally going to have a game that doesn't come down to the last series as they've had so many times this year. 
But you have to be impressed by this team after all the heartbreak they've had in the first six games. They go on the road, sold out crowd, Minnesota feeling good about things after last week at Purdue, and they were really in control of this game after they gave up that touchdown on the opening drive. Well, they were. They got back into control here, but then you, you saw a few, you know, a few minutes ago in the fourth quarter, looked like Minnesota may finally get some momentum back on, but the Cornhuskers were able to shut the door on. Now Myrick. Making Antonio Johnson gets out to the 25. And again, Rocky, we talked about how important this game was for Minnesota as well because you look at their schedule, yeah. different story. Yeah, this is certainly even tougher. Look at these, these teams still left. Michigan State, Ohio State, you got Wisconsin there at the end. is never an easy task. So it's, uh, you know, we, we talked about is this a must-win game for either team at the beginning of the program? Well, I mean, maybe not must-win, but it's certainly whoever – did not come out on top in this game. It was certainly a tough, uh, you know, tough sled moving forward. So Brooks in the backfield. The Leidner's going to have to throw it all around the lot now. Or one would think. Trying to catch him off guard, I guess. And they take their final Don't time out after the one-yard gain. Don't understand that one, but. Dedrick Young, the true freshman with a tackle. So now Minnesota out of timeouts. You know, with that pick six, you know, I'm sure a lot of the attention will turn to Mitch Leidner. But clearly, it was the Nebraska defense taking the run game away. Well, it really was. That's what enabled Nebraska to, to, to stay in this game, keep getting the ball back to their offense and allowing Tommy, Tommy Armstrong to have the great day he did. You see Derek Kill, he's going to have to circle the wagons here and get this Minnesota program back on. The sophomore out of Houston, Texas, had a career high four pass breakups, but you don't want pass breakups. You want yeah, the picks. That's the thing. And, and again, this secondary has been under fire all season long. If you're a Cornhusker fan, it's nice to see your secondary come up with a big play. Now off the play fake. Leidner looking deep into double coverage. Nate Gary can't bring it in. Rashad still. So now third and nine. This is a, a tough system they play here. And Mark Banker runs for Nebraska. You know, it requires a lot of just moving parts in the secondary. The front seven, the, the line, the linebackers, they can just go play, go hunt and be instinctual football players. But the secondary, they have to make a lot of checks and a lot of things are nuanced in the in the coverage in the coverage system here. Playing well today though. Tight formation. Leidner dropped. Still can't come up with the play at the 40-yard line. So now it'll be fourth and nine for Minnesota. And there's a look at Mark Banker, fired up by the play of his secondary here in the fourth quarter. This is a coaching staff that's been around the block, still getting used to Nebraska. Nebraska's getting used to them, and uh, you know they've had plenty of success together down the road. Well, that's the thing with the, the again the defensive system being a little bit different, the offensive system certainly being different than what they're having here. The players they have are, are recruited to play last year's system, not necessarily this one. So that's kind of been the issue: is coaches are asking players to do things that maybe don't exactly match their skill set. Fourth down, another interception. Gary picks up his third on the season. And he points to the Cornhusker fans who made the trip and said, we're taking this one back to Lincoln. And obviously Leidner in this situation, this point in the ball game, has to force a throw. But Gary comes down with it. Here we'll see, we'll get a look at it here. Again, really, I, mean, I look down the field, not a ton open there. You see three Cornhuskers around the wide receiver. He had enough time, but he had to force one. Nebraska made him pay. Minnesota can't stop the clock. So they line up in the victory formation, and they'll enjoy this one. After all the heartbreak in year one under Mike Riley, they get to go on the road and enjoy it. And then he, you see that, 
You talk about the leadership, the guys who have stuck together. That's it right there. That's one of the lead leaders of this team, Josh Banderas, who took the field hurt. And they'll get to enjoy a victory on the road. And remember, Jane reported earlier about how he talked to Mike Riley and his team, didn't give up. The guys were showing up the voluntary lifting sessions and weren't hanging their head. And they were showing up the meetings. They still believe in this program. And I think that was evident here today. Of course, it helps to have a healthy number 15. The playmakers always make any system look better. And I think that was certainly key. It took a lot of pressure off of Jordan Westerkamp. They finally get another explosive piece into that offense. Pearson L with a, the acrobatic touchdown earlier. So they will not have to run another play. He said it was like a broken record, getting tired of trying to figure out all these last second losses, but they didn't have to worry about crunch time here on the road. A dominant second half by the Cornhuskers. They stopped the losing streak to Jerry Kills Gophers. Mike Riley gets his first Big Ten win, 48-25, the final in Minnesota. Tommy Armstrong led the offense. The defense was solid. They win it by 23. Coming up next, college football scoreboard presented by Honda. For Rocky Boyman and Jane Slater and our entire crew, I'm Eamon McEnany saying so long from Minneapolis. Now here's Chris Cotter in the studio.